Transformers. More than meets the eye. We're going to be talking about Transformers, but not this kind like I used to play with as a kid. But uh, these other kind of Transformers. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Oh, by the way, I love this picture here. I guess I said that a lot, but that's why I put these here. Uh, in engineering, this could be in physics, though, too, right? In class, you do, like, a super simple, dumb example. Homework, it's pretty complicated. And then on the exam, it's, like, some insane thing. Um, so we're going to talk about transformers because they're they're actually really important in everyday life. We use these all the time at uh, well for our own electricity needs. So the way they work is this. Remember this um, epsilon here? That is a potential difference. We're going to call this whole area right here the primary. That's what this right here is going to be called over here. So on the left, it's going to be the primary, just the way I've drawn it. Over here, we call the secondary. So everything over here will have a subscript S, everything over here will have a subscript P for primary and secondary. So uh, very quickly, what I'll do is I'll just um, explain to you maybe how it works. What we have is in this case right here, we've got a potential difference. Remember, that's measured in volts. We've got this measured in volts, number of turns, those don't have units, and uh, currents, those are in amperes and amperes. So we've got a lot of different things going on here. But what's going on is this. You've got um, a potential difference here as an alternating current. So what that's going to do, that's going to induce a magnetic field here. So this right here is going to become magnetized. And of course, because it's changing, of course, then that right there also goes to here. And then the changing magnetic field then induces a current over here. So this is sort of the way it works. So you've got sort of... Um, yeah, electricity. So, so this sort of electromagnetism thing, how electricity can cause magnetism and changing magnetic fields can cause electricity. I know I'm saying it very coarsely. It's uh, really due to lenses and Faraday's laws and uh, with the hand rules. But if you very coarsely, you could say that it's a sort of a thing reversed, right? You've got your current that creates a magnetic field. Magnetic field changes, which induces a current. Um, and the advantage is this, depending on how many times you turn it, because remember Faraday's law is related to the number of turns in the coil. If you have like a few turns here and then a bunch of turns here, that's why I said if you go from small n, n in this case would be a number of turns in the primary and secondary. If you go from a small n in the primary to a large n, we call it a step up. That's because it gives a larger potential difference in the secondary. In other words, you start off with a something of, I don't know, 10 volts and maybe now you have like 50 volts. It's not just free energy though. It's like, what, what, how does this work? The power must be the same. If you think about it, power is current times uh, potential difference. So what happens is this, if the potential difference goes up, then the current goes down. So basically the power is constant. If you think of it this way, then you can say that the power, which is the current in the secondary times the potential difference in the secondary, is gonna be the same as the current in the primary times this in the primary. Now instead, if we just wrote these as epsilons instead, I'm just trying to show you sort of where the equation comes from. Uh, like this right here. Can you see we could actually do fractions then? We could say, all right, then um, or we could actually consider, for example, IS over IP. Can you see that we could actually do that? IS divided by IP. And we could say that equals EP over ES. Do you see I'm just removing, I'm just moving them in different places. And actually this is how they go. So if we look at this equation, this just shows you where this transformer equation came from. Uh, because the one that you get in your data booklet goes just like this. It goes E or epsilon, sorry, P over epsilon S equals, in this case, NP over NS, which equals, and remember now the P's do opposite than the I's. In other words, this one right here goes IS over IP. It goes like this. Let me just be sure I did it right. Let me just look it up and make sure I have it right. Uh, yes, this is how it works. So basically, given, uh, it depends if you know the number of turns and then you want the currents, or you might know the potential differences and you want the currents or potential differences, you want the turns. Basically, you need to be working with two of the three of these sort of uh, fractions. And that's how you can solve them. So they're not actually that hard. The harder part uh, from transformers is this thing that we call rectification. I mean, this is the thing is that's why I wrote down like AC is fine and all, but what if you want a DC signal? In other words, right now we've got the alternating current right here, which all the alternating potential difference, it goes up and down and up and down. But what if you're hoping to power something that needs a direct current, like a nice, smooth, constant current or potential difference? Uh, then you're in trouble. You see, this is not good.
So we have something called rectification. So this is the circuit diagram right here for a transformer. So just so you know, what we do is we draw this lead like this with an AC. That's what this little squiggle is supposed to mean. This, I always thought looked like a hand or like, you know, like knuckles or something like that. But this is supposed to represent the coils. Then I've got this right here that represents sort of the center of the transformer and you got other coils. So in other words, I could have redrawn this whole thing right here. I could have drawn it as just something that looks like this, right? So I could just say, um, just so you can see the difference here, I could have drawn it like this, you know, saying AC, and I could then draw it, you know, with these coils, and then I could put these two lines, and then more coils, and like this right here. There you go, and that's also AC. So this is basically my transformer. That's the circuit diagram for this transformer. I'm actually pretty impressed. I'm not uh, usually a very good artist, but I actually I can sort of tell what this looks like. I'm really proud of myself. I also took my time on this drawing. Uh, you can see clearly here I haven't, but you, you see the idea. So what we can do to rectify things, it's like wrecked them, damn near killed them. Have you ever heard that bad joke? Um, we've got full wave, uh, sorry, half wave rectification. Now what this means is this, we include something called a diode. Now a diode is a special device. You see the direction of this? It actually tells you something. It only lets current in one direction through. Uh, not the band, obviously. Uh, I mean, it only lets a current in one way. So remember, this is an alternating current. That means it goes sort of up and then down, then up and down. It's got a positive part and a negative part, right? The current goes up and down. Um, and remember, current is part of potential difference, so we can talk about them kind of interchangeably. So what happens is this. The positive part of the current, um, that will go sort of through, but the negative part of the current will just be chopped. It'll just be cut. It just won't go through. And so what this will do then, if we just do it like this and we're looking at the potential difference across some resistor A, you know, uh, sorry, some resistor right here. So we're looking between A and B, we've got a voltmeter sort of just plugged in between those and we're trying to plot, okay, what does this look like? Well, we're gonna see it rectified. So what I'm gonna do is show you that graph here. So let's see here, what does it look like? Well, normally, I'm just gonna draw it like this here. So normally it would do something like this, right? This right here would be the normal graph of the potential difference if we did it across here. So what'll happen is this. It will do the positive part just like it normally would, except this part right here, you know, the part that would be negative, it just won't do it. It won't let it through. And then it'll go up again, you know, then it could say down again. I mean, we can just, there's a few different uh, things. So, you know, we've done a few cycles here. This is one full cycle. See, this is one full cycle of the wave. One full period is this. This is two full periods of the wave. So what happens is this, this piece that would have been there, this negative part, the part that should have been down below, it just chops it, it doesn't let it through. So through this circuit, because it only lets one of the parts of the current through, so only one of the potential difference, only the positive part, it's like it's a machine that just sort of chops off the bottom of it, basically. So can you see it? It's just like this. So we would say that this thing right here is what we call rectified. What that means, then it takes the bottom part and just kills it. So the bottom part is now zero, so there's no negative, but the problem is, I just put this down, it doesn't look very DC to me yet. I mean, DC, it should look like, you know, like a nice straight line like this. Clearly, this isn't there yet. So that's why I just want to point out, this is the difference between rectification and smoothing. So we've got this thing, it's rectified, it's halfway of rectified, and I'll explain that in a second right here, and we're going to have it, uh, we're going to see a smoothing circuit we can do. So you can have halfway of rectification. So same thing, remember, just like we had, except now we're gonna smooth it. And to smooth it, what we do, we add a capacitor to the circuit here. So we're gonna add a little capacitor right here, like that. So what this does, this is really important here. Um, what it's going to do is, um, here, I'll still draw this thing right here, what it would normally wanna do. So this is going to be the rectification. Actually, I'm just gonna draw everything as a dotted line, actually. I'll draw it like this right here like this, and like this, and like this, you know, just so we have a few of them. Right? Uh, so what it's going to do is this. The current that passes through here, of course it's going to do the same thing. It's going to have it up, and it's going to try to do these little bumps, and then a bump, and then a bump. In other words, this here, this will, whoops, so it'll, it'll attempt to do this bump. 
What's going to happen in is this. I mean, the, the problem back here was that with this bump right here, the problem is it drops too low. We're trying to keep the current or the potential difference here, the, the voltage. We're trying to keep it from dropping too much. See, it's dropping too much. So we're trying to keep it sort of up. We're trying to sort of boost it all the time as it goes along. So what we can do is this. Instead of wasting half of the signal, remember that, you know, the signal that, you know, goes up and down like this, instead of wasting half of it, you know, instead of wasting that half, what we do is we put in this capacitor. So what it does is when the current is passing through here, yes, it passes through here, but it also passes through that capacitor and it charges the capacitor. So the capacitor is like a little mini battery. So it's going to charge up the capacitor as it goes through. And the advantage is when it doesn't have the signal, you know, when there's the other half of the signal that's not getting through, instead of just being killed, the capacitor is then allowed to discharge and send something through this uh, resistor. So what it does is this. It goes up, but then what happens is this. Instead of dropping all the way down, the capacitor is discharging, so it's helping out basically. So it's going to go something like, you know, something like this. And then it'll go up again, and then down again like this, and then up again, and then down. So this is better. So this right here, why it's rectified, and it is smooth. That's why I put rectified and smoothed. So this is called a half wave rectification. And like I said, we rectify it with a diode. We smooth it by adding a capacitor, which can then charge up while the current flows through. And then when the current stops in that diode, the, uh, I should say the capacitor, it discharges into the resistor. Now, the important thing is this, it only does it one time per cycle. If you consider like one whole cycle being um, from here, to here as one cycle. Do you notice it just rectifies it and smooths it just once in a full period. So this is the advantage and disadvantage of it. It's better certainly than just rectifying it. Well, it's better than this, obviously. This is just nothing, that doesn't help. So it's better and then it got even better because you smoothed it. That's called half wave rectification.